Hello everybody, I'm back. Had a little fish uh, issue with my phone and it's got corrected and so here I am at the Dream Center. Uh, I got a weird little little message for you. You know, it's uh it's about Jesus healing people, healing the blind or the deaf and the mute, and the way he did it, right, was completely different than normal. Right, but he did it on purpose, and we're gonna get into that, right? So, we're gonna start at Mark 7 31 to 37. Again, I departed from the region of Tyre and Sidon. He came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought him to him, one who was deaf and had a had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him, put his hand on him, right. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looked up to heaven and he signed and said to him, Ifafatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosened and he spoke pain plainly. And then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying he has done all these things well he makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak right so we have problems with our hearing right we hear the word of god right we hear the preachers and we go out and do the same thing we were doing before we went to church right and the way we speak right and how we speak and talk to people right sometimes we're gossiping sometimes we're saying things about people or just saying things that ain't right, right? That ain't lined up with the word of God. You know, I've been accused of uh, speaking uh, hate and that I'm brainwashed and that I, I'm part of a cult, right? Because I, because I line my, my, my thinking and knowledge of God with what I say, right? So I'm not trying to lean on my own understanding. I'm leaning on God's understanding and, and they don't like it and people don't like it. And the truth is they didn't like it when Jesus preached and they crucified him for that, right? So it shows you when people say your 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 heat, uh, hate speech and, and and you're brainwashed. But if you're lined up with the word of God, you know what side of the cross they fall on. And as simple as that, right? So we go here, Mark 8, 22 to 26. Then he came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. Once again, touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. How did he know what a tree looked like if he was blind, right? It never says that he became blind. He said a man that was blind, right? And so we had to assume he was blind from forever right because it doesn't say he became blind so right when god talks to jeremiah he tells him uh, what do you see and he sees things but it's a spiritual sight right jeremiah wasn't blind god was aligning his spiritual sight right so he's making sure he's seen spiritually right so jesus it's making him see spiritual things, right? God, men walking like trees. And the Bible it compares us to trees. God compares us to trees. And he put his hand on his eyes. Once again, he puts his hands on him again. And made him look up and was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sat, sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into town nor tell anyone in town. Right? Why not tell everybody? Why not tell everybody, right? All right, so John 9, it says, uh, John 9, 6, it says, he, he, had his, he had said these things and spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and anointed the, eye, the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing, right? So it says right here, which is cha John chapter 9. Why did all this happen? Why is he spitting? Why is he doing things? Why is he putting fingers in the ear? Completely different than the way the Jewish Pharisees did things, right? This will be considered ritual uncleanness, right? But Jesus, 
Jesus is doing this on purpose, right? He's showing them something. He's trying to prove He's trying to prove something to everybody. He's trying to show them how spiritually blinded they are. So it says right here, if you go to the beginning of chapter 9, it says, A man born blind received sight. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, it was like back then when you, get, you were handicapped, you automatic, someone sinned or they're sinning your life. So but we all sin and we all fall short. We're born with natural born sin, right? So why would sin cause this, right? And so this is the spiritual blindness that they had, right? Their traditions, the way they thought. And this is why Jesus is doing things completely different, right? He's trying to show them how blind they are. Right? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is, it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he's showing them something. He's showing them the light, right? And so he's trying to show the Pharisees and everyone around how spiritually blinded they were. And was, this was judgment, right? And let me tell you, Jesus is a God of judgment. And people always preach this Jesus that he like soft and he's weak. He ain't weak. He's a man and he's power and he walked off with authority and he carried himself with authority and the authority all heaven and earth was given to him, right? So he had the authority to judge. He had he had the he had the Holy Spirit empowered by God to do these things, right? Because why he was God in the flesh. And why was he doing it? Says he says. John 9, 39, and Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and the, those who see may be made blind. Made blind. Those that can't see will see, and the ones that say they can see will be made blind. Judgment, for I have come into this world. And this Jesus is a God of judgment. And people don't want to talk about the judgment part. And let me tell you, in First John, in the first chapter of John, it says he was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was with God. The Word was, he, he's saying he's eternal, right? The Word was God, right? Is God. And the Word manifested in the flesh and dwelt amongst us, right? So he's saying he's eternal. So if Jesus is eternal, right? And if you believe, then he was there during the flood. Right? When Noah's ark. So he was there with the right hand of the Father when God flooded the world. So he never goes against his Father. Right? So he is a judgment, right? Sodom and Gomorrah, when God laid judgment upon that, that those cities, right? No one's there to this day. So Jesus is right there at the right hand of the Father from the beginning. The Word was with God, the Word was God, and He came manifested in the flesh, right? So He's a God of judgment, right? And you don't think that God crushed His own Son, crushed, killed Jesus, right? So that in our place, and you don't think that He's coming back in a second coming, and He is not going to crush those that don't believe. Let me tell you, man, a lot of people say he love, he don't, he hates sin, but he loves the sinner. He calls sinners into repentance. And let me tell you, when the lake of fire comes and people are sent, it was made for Satan and his angels, but he's sending sinners there. He's sending sinners there. So I'm telling you, man, you got to call it on your life and you need to call out to God and believe, repent. But Jesus said, repent, the first thing he said, right? Because this is judgment. Those that hear the word of God, faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you're near hearing this and you don't believe there's judgment upon your life, this is the time that you have time. God is calling you for repentance, right? And so the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees were, 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 that heard him, were, these words, and said to him, are we blind also? They knew he was talking about them. And Jesus says to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But you say you see, therefore your sins remain. He's showing them how spiritually blinded they were and it was judgment on their life. So I call you out of spiritual blindness in the name of our Lord, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus of Messiah. So I call on our Father in the name of the Son for his Holy Spirit, because Jesus is showing that in this these passages, that how he healed people, that tra their traditions made them blind. It's only by the power of God that we're healed, that we're saved, that we're led to him. It says it throughout the Bible. None of this is an accident. So if you're hearing this, there's a calling on your life. And that if you're spiritually blinded, Jesus could put his hand on you. And the power of God will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will break the bondage. So I call upon the Father for those that are watching and listening, Father, that, that you unveil their eyes, Father, so they could see 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen.